Welcome back to my P5 Play series. Um, today we're going to make a pretty, pretty cool game. I think it's pretty good. I'm pretty happy with it. I'm just going to put it onto the screen now so you can see it. Um, I mean, it doesn't look, it doesn't look the best, but here it is. Um, so it's, it's not an amazing game, but I'm real proud of it. So not much code at all, really easy. So the idea is you click and it drops a block. The idea is you've got to try and stack as many as possible. So if I put that there. Put two in a row, three, and you see once you get to three, it's made this platform slanty. If I can try and win the game, Ugh, I'm rubbish. Um, try to see if you can cheese it like that. Look at that. Oof. Ooh, that's so good. Um, so yeah, so we're gonna make some more of that. So real nice and easy. Go to P5 Play. Straight away, you want to copy this. You need that. Make a new project, go to your index, and replace that. Nice and easy. Back to our scripts, get rid of all this rubbish. We don't need any of that. Definitely don't need Grammarly. I spell everything wrong anyway. Get rid of all this rubbish. The only thing we need to remember is clear. Oh, bit laggy there. And let's put it. So first things first. What we're going to do is we're going to set some gravity. So we're going to do well dot gravity equals, let's go seven. That was the one I used in my game. Change it to whatever you want. We can explore that later on. So we've got world.gravity equals seven. Nice and simple. Now I'm going to make some variables. So I want my platform. So let platform. And then I'm going to need let block. So that's going to be an individual block that goes. Um, I don't think so if you're necessarily going to need that, but um, we'll see how I feel as we go along. And then let blocks equals an array. Okay. Some of the bits we want as well, like score and level and stuff, but we're going to put them back in later. Um, so yeah, so first things first, let's make the platform. So we're going to say platform equals new sprite. Now I'm going to put it in the width divided by 2, the height divided by 2, we have 100 width, 5 depth, and I'm going to set its sort of its physics, its collision mode, to the K. Okay, so the K means kinetic, all it means is it has the physics part so you can touch it and things like that but what can't be done is moved by something else okay so if um a block hits it it's not going to bounce off or anything like that like it could do like an angry bed or something um because you want it so i can move it in code so i can make it move left to right up and down whatever i want but i can throw a block at it and it ruins the whole game okay and then set a color if you want you might do platform We want. There we go. So that's all working. So we've got all clear. Now the next thing we want to do is, well, probably, I think the best way to do it now is to probably go ahead and get some blocks working. To do that, we need some mouse presses. So we're going to say if mouse dot presses so if I'm, if I'm touching the mouse it's a function what I want to do is let block oop not let blocks I've already made any we set block equals new sprite and I want to make it mouse x and then I'm gonna do it at zero now I already know what's going on so if we set a zero then what we're gonna find is as we build this our Blocks are going to start to be building from where I'm clicking, so I can't click off the screen, I can't click off the EF, it's not going to work. So, what we're going to do is we're going to do that, take away the score times by size. Now, I'll explain that in a minute because I'm going to make a score variable um, and then size and size and then it's collider, it's going to be a D for now, it's going to be dynamic. So, what I'm going to do is let score equal zero. Let's take it to one just so it'll work and then um, let size equals 40. So we can change the size of the squares later on. So let's see how it works. Nothing just yet. I think it's because I need to actually apply it to my blocks. So blocks.push. 
excuse me, a block like that. That should make us a new sprite in the right places. Let's check there's no error messages. I'm sure there will be at some point. And I know what I've done. Really rookie. So, the key nine amongst you might have noticed I set the world's gravity. What I didn't do was say what kind of gravity. So, those all just floating off the screen where I can't see them. So, now when I click, it should have a nice little block down. And that, depending on what you want to do, I, mean, I could say it's like 20. I was experimenting with it today. So, I feel about having it shoot down super fast. So, that looks, looks quite good. Maybe it's a bit easy. I don't know. Um, so we'll keep it at seven. We'll change it later on. So that's what I was with us. That's the majority of our game, doesn't it? We've pretty much done it all. So now what we need to do is we've got scores to check. Um, a really good one is to actually just do a bit of management. We need to make sure. Ooh, <laughs> wobbling a bit there. A bit of management because if at the moment what you might see is I've not used that much RAM, but if I'm spam clicking this eventually this RAM usage is going to go mental it's just wasting a lot of resources because I'm just making loads and those graphics not doing anything with them so what we're going to do is we're going to for loop through and if any of them have exceeded the boundaries of the game we're going to get rid of them so we're going to do for let I'm going to scroll down a bit for you let i equals zero i is less than uh, blocks dot length minus one minus one I plus plus and then all we're gonna do is if blocks i dot y position is greater than the height so down here somewhere then all we're gonna do is just delete them off the array so blocks dot splice like that yep it's just not gonna do anything particularly special you won't even notice at this point we make them all no difference. <laughs> um, that's it for now. So now we're going to do exactly the same thing. So we're going to use this for loop. Now I'm not going to use it twice. Like I'm not going to use, I'm going to copy and paste it, sorry. Um, because if you're ever removing anything from an array, it's a really bad idea um, to use one for loop if you're deleting things out of an array. Because then your for loop's going to try and get to the end of the array. You deleted something, it's, gonna, it's just not going to work. It's just going to crash. So I'll put room in blocks. A few comments that it's always good. And then spawning blocks. That's that. So I'm just going to push this down. Don't need that there. I'm going to add in this for loop again. So I'm going to go for each one. And then I'm going to use a colliding function. So I'm going to say if blocks i dot colliding. And then one well, will look see if it's if it's um touching the one above it. Is it is it the best way of doing it for now? I'm not too sure, I think it works well. Um, so blocks, and then i plus 1, like that. So if it's colliding with the blocks, then all I want to do is I'm going to increment the score. So score plus equals 1. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to say that thing, the colour is green. Okay, just, just so we know what what it is basically so we know it's connected so hopefully that works I'm gonna click there I'm gonna click there so it's connected Ooh. now I think we've got a bit of an issue <laughs> because the score's gone up and I think because we're doing the score times the size I think the issue there is that it's going a bit too far up. So maybe maybe it's a bit excessive to do, to do it times that. I don't know, I don't think it is though. I don't see any error messages or anything that's going weird. Um let's have to look at that. It might be possible to score going up too much, so we'll do it another one. Um we'll do a console log score just to check I've done anything wrong. So console dot log score just to double check I've done anything stupid because I no doubt have. So, so scores one. We start off at one. Aha. Okay, so what that seems to be doing. Let's say that five though. I don't know why that scores going up so much. 
because then it started getting a bit crazy because the score's gone to like 116. So clearly I've done something wrong there. So if box i is collided with box i plus 1, which if there's a chain, score plus 1, it does make sense, but I think what we might need to do is before we do that, because I think if we just, just always set the score to 1. Now, I'll explain this in a moment. So let's see what works. So 1, 1. Okay, so it's 2 again. And then 3 and 4. Yeah, so essentially what I'm doing is I'm counting how many in succession are uh, connected together. So the reason why I'm resetting it to 1 there is otherwise it's going to keep going crazy. It's going to keep checking and say, yeah, you got 4 together. So go 5, 6, 7, 8, even if you've only got 2 things or 3 things connected or whatever. So it's always important to set it back to the thing. I suppose when you get into the hundreds, when you're displaying the score, it's probably going to be a little bit awkward. Um, possibly. But um, yeah, you might see a little bit of flash of 0 or something like that when it's adding it up itself up. But look at that, I got myself to a good load of points and I lost a load again. So that's that. That's most of that game working really, because then we can display the score if we want to. So we could always stick in some text. So let's do text. Uh, let's do text size first. What size is good? Twenty text. Let's say um, score plus score there. Let's put it in speech max. Let's not be silly. So score plus score, and then for the x and y positions, let's do the right middle width, 5 by 2, and then let's go 50 pixels down. Let's see how that looks. So score's 1. I could argue that should probably be 3, really, shouldn't it? One, two, three, four. So that's working. Seems to be a little bit of an issue with the physics there. Doesn't seem to be figuring out. You see, it's like you see it counting up the score. And I can obviously spam the top and go to twelve. Um, <laughs> looks quite good that. Um, yeah, so that's, that's the majority of the game done. Um, so possible things to improve it. We could have some levels. So I already have a few ideas for my game. So what I've said um, for your levels. Some along the lines of set a level variable and then I don't know, pseudo code it so if level equals equals one, then just do something that like platform dot rotation equals four. Okay, so then I'll just do um, set level equals one. See now, it's a little bit more difficult because it's going to be harder to stick these on. Oh, it's all wants to. Well, it's quite, it's quite hard that. <laughs> That's uh, one thing I've done in mind. Um, a possible one. I've actually stolen it from um, a previous game we've done. So we just go to we'll get rid of that. Is there's a game I made, I can't remember what it was now. Um, no, it's the bouncing ball in P5. What you might want to do. Is throw in some um, movement. You could make the platform move. So what we could do is say something on the lines of um, if platform dot x take away the size. I think I said it's hundred, so take away fifty. Probably use a variable for that really. Um, is less than zero. Else, if um, platform dot x plus fifty is greater than the width, do something, and then we've got a little variable up here. Let's call it let right. So I'm moving left or right. Let's set that to true. So we move right first, and then. So if it's that way, so right equals not right. I think that makes sense. Well, actually, to be fair, I can just keep doing that. So it'll flick between them both anyway. Um, and then I can say if 
I'm going right. Platform dot x plus equals 0 0.5. That might be too much. Else, if it's not right, platform dot x minus equals 0 0.5. See that works? Okay, bit slow. So, but there's loads of things you can do with this, guys. So, this is my stack of blocks game. Got some movement in there, some rotations. As I said, if I go back to my example, it rotates. I think about the amount of code we've done. We've got the idea of levels working. We've got score displaying. You know, high scores will be nice and easy in this one. If the, your score beats the high score, we've got 63 lines of code. It's absolutely nothing. And hopefully, it was nice and easy. Um, because I think it's dead easy. Like I put this together in 10 minutes, 1 a.m. Made it the first time, and I just found it really easy to understand. But if you are struggling as well, just go back onto here. Go back onto layer. Closing bits. Look, there's so many things: groups, animations, environments, sound in there, panning sound. Um, oh, the sprite. There's loads of things for the sprite that tells you everything you need to know. And sprite, or tutorials, do what you want. So that's about it. So I'm gonna leave you to it. If you wanna go onto my replay and take a look at this one, um, I'll give it a proper name. So look for me in Tech Ed Online. I'll call it um, Stack the Block tutorial and then you'll see if I've improved it anymore so you can fork that or whatever you like. Um how long does it take for long? Let me see. Twelve minutes. I don't think that's too bad really. Um so yeah so that's stacking the blocks. Hopefully that was the first steps into game development and hopefully you're excited about it as I am. I might not sound it because I'm recording video and a lot more animated in real life but honestly it's so cool. Like and subscribe please. I'll see you in the next video.